this part of the, the lesson is for the Calvin cycle. This is still learning targets 11 and 12. And we'll be talking specifically about the Calvin cycle this time. <coughs> the Calvin cycle is also called the light independent reaction. And it is a reaction in photosynthesis that requires the ATP and the NADPH that were made in the light dependent reactions to convert CO2 molecules or carbon dioxide molecules into glucose, which is the sugar that plants make. And remember, plants make the food that everyone eats, that uh, heterotrophs eat. And so all energy ultimately comes from plants making sunlight and CO2 into food, and that we get the energy out of that. So the Calvin cycle, again, is this idea of taking the CO2 molecules that are in the air. Remember, CO2 is an inorganic carbon and changing them into an organic substance like glucose. CO2 is a poisonous substance to animals and changing that into something that we have to have in order to live. And so the steps of the Calvin cycle are these. I'll use a circle to talk about this. Remember, this is a cycle, so at the beginning is right after the end. And so as we think about cycles, remember that we're always going to start with the things that we ended with. First, we have three molecules of CO2 that come in from the atmosphere, and they're going to be added to the cycle. This is the only thing that is added to the cycle from the outside. Uh, other than our ATP and our NADPH. And these three carbon molecules are going to be changed again into a usable form. And what we, that the term for that is called carbon fixation. And so we're going to be fixing these carbons. And the way that we do that is they will combine with five three carbon sugars from the end of the Calvin cycle. Remember, we we start at the end with a cycle. And so right here at the end, we have five three carbon sugars. Strike that, reverse it. Three five carbon sugars there at the end of the Calvin cycle. And so those three five carbon sugars are going to combine with the three CO2 molecules. And in order to do that, there is an enzyme here called Rubisco. And if you'll remember, Rubisco, or if you remember, enzymes are molecules that speed up chemical reactions, and they do that by taking two things that would normally combine and combining them, or taking one thing and splitting it into splitting it apart. Well, in this case, Rubisco takes the CO2 molecule and binds it to this five carbon molecule and makes a six carbon molecule. So it does that for each one of the CO2s that are being used here. So after Rubisco has combined the three carbon, or the three five carbon molecules to the three CO2s, what we are left with is a temporary molecule that is a six carbon molecule. Now those three six carbon molecules quickly split into six three carbon molecules. So make sure you're tracking with me here because it's real easy to get lost in the numbers. So think about it. If we have three five carbon molecules and we have three CO2s, we have a total of 15 carbons here and three carbons here for a total of 18 carbons. All right. And so when we convert to six or three six carbon molecules, we still have 18. And then when those three sixes split into six three carbon molecules, we still have 18. So we're not losing or gaining anything. We're simply changing the shape of what we have. And so after carbon fixation occurs and the three CO2s uh, combine with the three five carbon molecules using Rubisco, what we are left with is 
six three carbon molecules, and these six three carbon molecules are called PGA. Stands for phosphoglycerate. For our purposes, we're not um, going to call it that. PGA is perfectly acceptable. All right. So remember, we made ATPs and NADPHs in the light dependent reaction. Well, this is where they're going to come into play. Each one of the six three carbon PGA molecules are going to be energized by one NADPH and one ATP. So that's a total of six NADPHs and six ATPs for all six of the PGA molecules. And so remember NADPH picked up some high energy electrons. Well, NADPH is going to drop those high energy electrons off. And it's going to turn back to NADP plus. Where is it headed? It's headed to the light dependent reaction to go pick up some more electrons. So it's gone. Along with that, and we have six of these just to make sure we're keeping up here. Along with that, we're going to have six ATPs. And how do ATPs work? Well, they add a phosphate. So the six ATPs are going to add a phosphate to each one of those PGA molecules. And so after they add their phosphate, they are going to be six ADPs. And so those six ATPs and those six ADP or six NADP pluses and those six ADPs are all headed back to the light dependent reaction to pick up more energy. Now, because of the energy, the electrons and the phosphate that were added to our PGA molecules, those molecules are now changed. They are no longer what they were. Now they are six. They're still six three carbon molecules because we didn't lose any carbons, but they're no longer called PGA. Now they are called G3P. Which is called which is glyceraldehyde three phosphate, but you don't again you don't need to know that. Now we have three or six three carbon G3Ps, and these G3Ps are full of energy. And one of them is going to be dropped off right here at this part of the Calvin cycle. Just one of them. So what are we left with? Well, we're left with five G three Ps. So if you'll notice, we're almost back to where we started. In order to get to in order to get from the five G three Ps that we have back to the three five carbon molecules that we have we need to change them around. We need to rearrange them. And in order to break those bonds and rearrange something, we need some energy. Well, where are we going to get the energy? This is a cell. And so we're going to get that energy from ATP. And so the three ATPs at this stage are simply used to rearrange those five G3P molecules back to our original three five carbon molecules. So the only thing that we've lost in this cycle is the things that we put into it, and that's these three, C2, three CO2s. And they're no longer three CO2s. Now they are one G3P. Now, this cycle happens twice, and we have... When this cycle happens twice, we have two G3Ps. 
two G three P's have both of them have three carbons apiece, and they will combine together to make this molecule, which is glucose. And this molecule here is the final goal of this process, photosynthesis. From the time that light shone on photos, uh, photosystem 2 and split the water to the time that the NADPH caught the high energy electrons and ATP was made from ATP synthase, all of those things are culminating in this one molecule, glucose, which is broken apart by organisms to get the energy back out of it, which we will talk about when we do cellular respiration. So, for summary, Calvin cycle, we start with three CO2 molecules, and from those three CO2 molecules, we get one G3P, and with two G3P molecules, we get one glucose. Our reactants for this for this reaction is CO2, obviously important for that, and NADPH and ATP serve as reactants in this in this case. And the products are going to be glucose, again, the most important of the products, and NADP plus and ADP. So remember I told you earlier that if you know this picture, you'll be able to tell me all about what's going on. Well, you should be able to tell me that light is being used to catalyze a reaction in which H2O is used as a reactant and O2 is lost as a byproduct that H2O supplies the electrons which are picked up by NADPH and as a result of that ATP is made. Well, ATP and NADPH go to the Calvin cycle and are used in order to make a high energy sugar which is glucose by using CO2 and those NADPH and ATP are converted back to NADP plus and ADP in order to be used again by the light reaction. Now, obviously, there's a lot more detail that we've discussed, and you'll need to be uh, need to be up on those things. But if you can understand the basics of what this picture is telling you, it's going to go a long way to helping you understand what is fo what photosynthesis is all about. So, one last thing. We're going to talk about the rate of photosynthesis and some things that can affect the rate of photosynthesis. And remember, the rate of reaction is simply just the rate at which the reaction occurs, and different conditions can change the rate of photosynthesis. And these different things usually have to do with what is going into the reaction or what is um, what can affect that reaction directly, or what what affects any reaction for that matter. And so the first one, for instance, something that affects all reactions is temperature. As you increase the temperature of a reaction, that reaction will happen faster. Now, if you decrease the temperature, that reaction will happen slower. But you can increase the temperature too high. We've talked about proteins quite a bit, and proteins will begin to denature at high temperatures. Well, since this whole reaction is is built up and bound up in proteins, well, we need those proteins to stay intact. And so once temperatures get to a certain uh, certain level, the, pro the reaction will stop. And once temperatures get too cold, the reaction will stop as well. So temperature, water is another one. What does H2O have to do with this? Well, if there is no water, there is no photosynthesis because there are no high energy electrons. And so water can also control the rate of photosynthesis simply by not being present. CO2 concentration. If there's a higher concentration of CO2 in the environment, plants will make sugar faster because there's more CO2 available to do that. But that levels off at a certain concentration, meaning that the reaction can only happen so fast. There's only so much CO2 that a plant can take in. So if you take, if you get the saturation beyond a certain point, the, the reaction cannot speed up anymore, and it just levels off. And that's the same thing with light intensity. Light intensity has to do with how bright or how how intense the light is shining down. And so, 
at, at high light intensities, you can increase the rate of photosynthesis, but those light levels will only be increased so much. A, the photosystem can only take in so much light. It can't take in extremely high levels of light and so is unable to affect the rate of reaction much higher than that. So, again, this is the uh, whole reaction here. If you're just looking at this picture, and if you understand that H2O is necessary to supply the electrons for the light dependent reaction so that NADPH ATP can be made and that CO2 is necessary to get the carbons to make the glucose, that is going a long way to helping you understand what these two reactions, light dependent reaction and the light independent reaction are all about.